travel industry is on the mend and then some after TSA reported the highest number of travelers since the beginning of the pandemic. That was this past Sunday when the numbers hit over two and a half million. For more on the state of the travel sector, we're joined by Travel and Leisure CEO Mike Brown. Mike, thanks for being here. Now, a lot of your business is vacation clubs, timeshares and the like, um, How, which I think gets less attention in the overall travel picture. But talk to us about how that's holding up as a part of people's travel plans. Well, we're a 100% leisure company, as you pointed out, and everything you're seeing in leisure travel this year, when it was started this year as a revenge travel, then it was summer travel, and everyone wondered what was gonna happen after the summer. It remains consistently strong. There seems to be no sign of weakness. Your TSA numbers, uh, we're based in Florida, record numbers coming back to Central Florida, vacation capital of the world. So really no signs of weakness. Uh, Ford bookings look strong even into next year. Macroeconomic news, geopolitical, makes everyone want to sound hesitant, but it's not showing up in leisure travel. Julia mentioned timeshares, and particularly on the timeshare front, too. You had a lot of boomers that had really bought into timeshares early on. So now, is there expected to be kind of this, this turnover or churn or roll-off of some of that timeshare ownership and whether or not it gets passed on to the next generation, too? Well, the consumer's change and the industry's change. Let's just talk really quickly sure. about our consumer. Average age of the new purchaser is, is under 50 years old. Gen Xers and Millennials represent 70% of our purchasers. So the demographic is changing. What's not changing is people want a brand they can trust and they want resort amenities that they know when they arrive to their vacation, they're gonna get all the things a brand offers. What was interesting 15 years ago coming out of the great financial crisis was the industry completely changed who it was. It's led by branded companies like Wyndham, Marriott, Hilton, Disney, Holiday Inn, which represents about 80% of the industry. Mm. It is a flexible industry, whereas that misperception is you have to go to the same place the same week and stay seven days. That's no longer the case. You can be in Mexico for seven days in a three bedroom and then escape to our newest resort in Atlanta for two nights just to get a, an event or a sporting event in downtown Atlanta. You mentioned forward bookings were strong. What, can you put some growth rates behind that? And how is the pricing on the back of that? So uh, pricing, um, we've been able to increase our, our prices right along with what's happening in the general market. Come back to why inflation has actually been a benefit to us this year. But on the pricing side, uh, really seeing an ability to grow and, and really no consumer resistance to it. As it relates to growth and bookings, we're seeing a really interesting trend occur. Our room nights are up from 2019 and already Q1 of 2023 is ahead of where Q1 was in 2020 before COVID hit. What's happening though is we're seeing room nights extend by about 8%. So this work from anywhere uh, trend that we're seeing is changing how people are using our product. That consumer that maybe waited till work was done at four o'clock or five o'clock on a Friday is now escaping on a Thursday afternoon, working from anywhere. A lot of cases are resorts, a two bedroom or a one bedroom with a dining room table on their iPad or computer, and they're getting away for longer periods of time. And we're seeing that trend stick for our consumer. All morning long, we've been talking about tech layoffs, right? And, and other areas of the economy where we're seeing some retrenching. We saw in the ADP report, financial jobs uh, dropped. You are on the other end of that, right? Yes. How much trouble are you still having finding good people to work for you? Well, first of all, we already have incredible people and we are part of that 224,000 new jobs that were created last month. Um, as long as leisure travel remains strong, hospitality is needing great people at our resorts and on our sales and marketing organization. How difficult is it? Yes, it is difficult. Not only bringing new talent into the organization, but as you can see, when people are leaving jobs, moving to other new roles, it's usually for money. Um, so we really have a culture of hospitality, engagement in the community through our ESG efforts. And people, we try to retain them not only by being a great growing place to work, but also the culture we're creating. And, and you're raising wages also? Absolutely. Mm. Travel and Leisure CEO Mike Brown joining us here in set, on set. Thanks so much for the time, Mike. Appreciate the time.